Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's mailbag episode day. On today's episode, we are going to talk about if a Zach Levine trade will change the future for the Chicago Bulls that will place them in championship contention. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk about why Zach Levine not doing interviews ain't so bad. <laughs> Y'all already know we're going to talk about it. But you know, you got to hear the music fair. Cognac. Yeah. Yeah. Shy Bulls Podcast with the Cognac Boys. I'm Cognac Boy Bobby, and I'm holding it down on today's episode of Shy Bulls Podcast. If you like what you're listening to today, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so every time we drop, you be one of the first ones to know. Now, before we get into the grand scheme of things, I want to talk about why Zach Levine not doing interviews is not such a bad thing like everybody's making it seem. Look, one one thing I want to do, and look, and I'm on Zach Levine's side about this. Let's keep it basketball. Every time I get in front of a mic, I don't need to hear about a trade talk. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it about basketball. Let's make it about the team. Let's not take it away from it. Y'all know I'm upset. All the stuff is out there already. Let's not make it something that is really, really not. So let's just keep it about basketball. Y'all know why I'm upset. <laughs> and another reason I'm not too mad about what Zach Levine is doing or did last night is because the wins will mask the truth. <laughs> if the Chicago Bulls start to win, they win games. I don't care if it's just one game, they lose and then win another game or go on a two game win streak, a three game win streak. It's going to mask the truth. <laughs> that Zach Levine wants to be traded and that he doesn't want to play for Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan, his choices will be glossed over simply because a W or another number went up in the win column. You know what I'm saying? So it will match the truth. So let it all be about basketball. Let's look at it for what it really is and not gloss over all that. And it's definitely going to gloss over some of the things that the front office has been doing as well. So, I'm not too mad at Zach Levine for saying, get off me. I want to go to the locker room and get my clothes on. <laughs> on the real. Not mad at him. Hey, it is what it is at this particular moment, but we got to take it for what it really is. Now, let me know how y'all feeling about that anyway, too. Y'all think that whole little thing with him not wanting to do an interview is a big thing? I say it's not a big thing. He doesn't have to do a damn interview. I'm not saying skip out on multiple games, but if you don't feel like doing an interview one night, don't do the interview. You're a grown adult. Make your own decisions. Don't really care. And it ain't that deep. <laughs> it ain't that deep, y'all. But now I want to go ahead and get into the mailbag, what this episode is really, really about. That's you guys. That's that everybody that called in and left their thoughts. And we got some good ones. I want to kick this one off uh, by letting you guys hit to Big O and what he got to say and why this video is named what it is. So, so y'all know it's me. It's Big O, man, with the second one in the row. But I just want to add in, look, sometimes it's okay to take one or two steps back to take three or four forward, okay? If I lose my job and I'm, and I, and I, you know what I mean? And I have to take a lower paying job and my rent, I can't afford my rent, but I really love my apartment. Guess what? I got a downgrade to build myself back up. It happens in life. You know what I mean? It happens across sports. You see it all the time. It's okay to do that. It's okay to have to go through that in life. And it applies to everything. We can't be scared to take a step back, get our shit in order to get ourselves back to where we want to be. You know what I mean? If I got to drive a little Camry or something to get back and forth to work, guess what? I got to get my credit in order. I got to save some money. Then guess what? When I get all that shit in order, I'm coming back on, you know, I'm coming back, you know what I'm saying, with the car that I want. I'm coming back in a, in a, in a Hellcat or Scat Pack, whatever, the, whatever it is that you make. That, that's just how life is. Which in team sports with the Bulls, it has to be that way. You know what I mean? And we know the Bulls, for all we know, they could be bringing back winning our pieces. When Zach get moved up out of it, they could be like, we don't want to go through that. But the thing is, whatever it is, you need to do the right thing by the team. And I want them to do the right thing by the team. And 
build a winning culture. You know what I mean? You have to build a winning culture. It ain't about the names on the back. It's about the name on the front. Okay? It has to be that way. It has to be that way. Because when you embed when you embedded that, before you get Ma signed to your team, actually signed to a Bulls, Chicago Bulls contract, they need to know that from the go. So from day one, from practice to the game, people going to come out there and put it on the line because they understand this is what we're doing it for. You know what I'm saying? All that, we don't have to be best friends. We don't have to be cool. Fuck all that nice guy shit. That nice guy shit is cool, but it ain't getting you win. All right? You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? You have to build. In other words, you have to have, you have, to have respect. You know what I'm saying? When it's about the name on the front, it's about respect. You can be a nice guy, but do I really respect you? Zach Levine want to be moved. Guess what? He don't respect niggas. And when you look at it, zoomed out, who else around the league going to want to come to the Bulls when they know, hey, the Bulls not respected. That, I love what Zach Levine doing because he's putting the team on notice from the general manager to ownership. Y'all bullshit. Y'all ain't really trying to win. I ain't going to waste my time here. Why should he? Don't waste your time. Man, big O. Man, man, man. You came in with a lot of fire, and you did leave another voicemail, and you asked the question. Will a Zach Levine trade set the Bulls up to probably win some championships or at least be more competitive and be competing for some championships three, four, five years down the road? And I think that was big, and I think you hit, it, hit the nail right on, right on the head when you said that it's about the name on the front, not the name on the back. Because when we watch these guys play, that name on the front is Chicago. That's our city. That's the place we love. That's most of our birthplaces. You know what I'm saying? So we want to see this team be a representative or a great representation of what Chicago is about. Is about. No matter how much stuff that fans get from Philly, Bro, their their teams are a great representation of the fans. Look at the Eagles. Hey, this is a city of brotherly love. We work hard. We don't settle for mediocrity. We want to excel in all that we do. Philadelphia Eagles, how, how long have they been great in the NFL? Even looking at the Philadelphia 76ers, I talk a lot of smack about them, about them not being able to get past the second round, but let's keep it a buck. At least they in the talks of, for contention. So that's why I think it's really, really important that we pay attention to this. And I'm going to say it like C-Dub said, we should be thankful. I'm going to say it like Big O said it. We should be thankful that Zach Levine is putting the Chicago Bulls on notice from the top to the bottom, your star player, I don't care how you rank him, your star player is not happy with the things that he's going through, with the things that he's seen, the way that this team has been constructed, the way that the coach and his rotation stink, the way that the coach and him and all his decisions don't make sense a lot of the times, Zach Levine put that on notice. Now, would a trade help us get to that championship? Or at least be in those conversations, possibly, depending on what the front office does. But they got to make good decisions. And right now, those decisions have not been so great. So I don't have much uh, much to expect from them. But shout out to you, Big O. Man, that was a great mailbag. And shout out to you for hitting the nail right on the head. Now we got to move on to my guy, Corn. Just to continue this conversation about the trade talks and Zach Levine, we gonna hear from Corn. Here it is. Hey Kings, what's good, man? And man, it's your boy Corn, man. Um, yeah, man, it's been rough, right? Um, I've been watching your shit, man, with Zach Levine, man. I'm trying to make this quick because I got a two part question for y'all. Um, I got a trade in my. I don't know if the money makes sense with it or whatnot, but you know, I feel like because we know where Zach and Lamar really want to go. And let's just be 100 about it. And if they want to go there, I feel like if we trade Zach and DeMar for, let's say, D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and uh, I don't even know, I'm thinking I'm going to fuck up his name, but Hoochie Ramama. Hoochie Ramama. I'm going to mess up his name. You know what I'm saying? But the other, you know what I'm saying, power four on the lake. Um, 
I feel like that'd be a good deal. Um, I feel like that would get our team automatically um, a fast-paced younger team with D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves starting um, as D'Angelo's point guard, Austin the shooting guard. Um, and uh, send Kobe to the bench um, and, and with P. Will to the bench. And, you know, let's, let's just – have fun. You know, I'm not going to say they're going to win a lot of games, but it'll be a fun team to look at. It'll be a fun team to watch. It'll be a high flying team. And maybe it will open up more for, uh, uh, you know, say, a, a Phillips to get in there, um, for a Bitsum to get in there. Uh, you know, say, it'll give more chance for these G League guys who we're looking at to come up because we are now going young and we're going on the development side once we get that. I know D'Angelo was like 27 and all that, but he still got that. You know what I'm saying? That that young way, that young slag of the way he plays. You know what I'm saying? The Lamar and Zach, like I said, they lost us, man. Uh, they don't uh, they don't want to play for Billy. Uh, Billy has lost his team completely. So it's time to blow it up, man. Um, with AC and Vooch, I don't know. Um, I say stack up on picks when it comes to them. Um, and that's the other part. What, what can we get back, you think? And what you think will be the smart thing? I see why people – why people was – I don't know why people were saying and looking all crazy when we was asking for two firsts for AC. Now y'all know why we want two first-round picks. So what would be the smart play for AC and Vooch? You know what I'm saying? Should we send them to the Suns, Memphis, Dallas, something like that for some picks? Um, I don't know what they got to offer, so that's more on you um, if they got anything to offer for that. But uh, I think those picks will be great for us in the future as well. Um, we trade DeMar and Zach for some folks, and we trade K- AC and Vooch for some picks. Um, appreciate y'all, Kings, like always, man. Um, all love. I'm out. Shout out to Corn in his voicemail. Hey, a lot to dive in from that one. For one, we know what Billy Donovan is at this point. He ain't doing nothing. I feel like he lost the locker room. I feel like the guys are just being professional, especially after that win last night. I think they just plan for themselves at this point. And like I said, I don't want to get, you know, too deep into the Billy Donovan stuff, but uh, his ass got to go, bro. (laughs) That's just what it is. But I really want to dive into the second part of your voicemail, bro. When people come out here and talk about Alice Caruso can't garner two first-round picks, I like to point to example, Drew Holiday. Let's compare the two. Drew Holiday, Alice Caruso, both are champions, right? Drew Holiday, Alice Caruso, both guys are defensive menaces, right? Drew Holiday and Alice Caruso can put up some points offensively, right? So what the hell is the problem? Drew Holiday was traded for two first-round picks in 2024 and one in 2029. Alice Caruso can garner the same thing simply because the resume kind of stacks up comparable to one another. Would people go out and say that uh, Drew Holiday is probably the better scorer offensively? Absolutely. You you probably can go with that argument. But then on the other side, you could say Alice Caruso is not too damn far off. The guy is shooting over 60% from the field, bro. Over 40% from the three, bro. Getting steals every day, bro. Taking charges every day, bro. The man was in the, in the in-season game against the Orlando Magic. He was diving on the floor, injured, <laughs> injured, beating himself up. You can't tell me a championship contender wouldn't be smart to give up two first round picks to have that guy on your team. He's a difference maker. It's not going to always be in the box score when it comes down to Ilas Caruso. It's going to be on the film. Not the people that just go through and watch the 10-minute condensed game highlights, but that watched the entire game that catches everything. So that's the point. <laughs> if Drew Holiday can get traded for two first-round picks, Alice can. <laughs> so I'll leave it at that, Corn. Thanks for calling in, my guy. Now we move on to my guy, Bulls Daily. He has something to say about the state of the team. Here it is. Boys, baby, yeah, man, I'll be forgetting that these um, voicemails only be like two and a half minutes, three, three minutes or something. I'm just going crazy. The phone is cut off, but um, yeah, I, I, I pretty much said everything that I had to say. I just want to, you know, it, 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 it's just really crazy how 
I've been watching this Bulls team specifically for these last three years. I I I watch every game for the last three years. Like every single game, I haven't missed not one game. I missed every game for the last three years, and I can honestly say that this team is the worst. You this team is the worst out of the whole three years that we've been together. The worst right now. So, hey, I don't know, man. Uh, hopefully we can get everything situated, get everything together. I would love to see Zach Levine get the fuck up out of my city just for the simple fact because he a bitch and he don't play like what Chicago embodies. You know, like that hard, you know, that that gritty, that street, that hardcore. He don't nothing about him in, embody that shit. Yo ass grew up in a motherfucking penthouse somewhere. Fucking Hollywood Park or some shit. You know? So anyway, call y'all boys. Let me know how y'all feel, man. Have a good day. Have a blessed day. All right, it's boys day. No way into that rap. I'm out of here. Shout out to Bulls Daily. Appreciate you, my guy. And I definitely understand your frustrations. Um, Coming at this and looking at this team, man, I think that right now it probably it, it looks to me it's just always been it looks good on paper. But for some reason, these guys don't play well <laughs> for real. And to me, after you look at all the all the players, you got to start pointing to the coach. If nothing is turned around, this team has looked the exact same for three seasons now, bro. It hasn't changed much. They tried to change things, but it just hasn't worked. It just hasn't worked, bro. So I just understand the frustration, and I I really feel like, hey, whatever happens, man, whatever happens, whatever direction that they decide to go in, whether you blow the entire thing up, if you blow the entire thing up, a new head coach needs to be up in this building. I don't trust Billy Donovan when it comes to the development and trying to – uh set forth a play style that makes sense and or that contributes to winning more games in years past. So thanks for calling in, Bull Daily. Uh, I appreciate it, my guy. You already know. But now we got to move on. Y'all already know, since how bad the Bulls been playing, we got to let Auntie go get in their ass. Pause. <laughs> but here's the voicemail from Auntie Goon. Nephew, good morning. What's the word, gang? Hey, I just got out. Yeah. My thought is, my thought with Zach Levine, I don't know what's going on with Zach Levine to me. Billy lost Zach Levine a couple years ago. And my thing is, Zach Levine and all these trade rumors, why? Zach, I don't think Zach Levine going nowhere. My thing is, if Zach Levine, if some shit going on in this locker room, Zach Levine is our max player, high player, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, we have to make him happy. And all this talking about, are we going to trade that? Yeah, I was pissed off about the game the other night. I had this punk motherfucker, this light-skinned bitch, for over 22. He can't even hit. He barely hit 20. I don't even know. I think he had like 10, 20 points. But I had his ass over. He can't even get past 22. This has been for the last couple games. I don't know what the fuck is going on with Zach Levine. But if he ain't happy here, if you don't want to play here, sit your ass down to the trade deadline get in, and y'all need to figure out what y'all going to do with this man. If y'all, either we going to keep Zach Levine and build around him and make this man happy, because it, it, it ain't making no sense. Why get rid of Zach Levine and keep Billy, Bush, and DeMar? Do that make sense? That don't make sense. If I was, if, listen, I would do my best to keep Zach Levine. Yes, yeah, so, listen, we've been kissing Zach Levine as for the last couple of years. I'm the, I'm getting irritated with Zach Levine, but this is how it's going play. Ain't no way in hell with this man in the trade, Mark. The Martin, this is last season. Why the fuck we don't hear about him being traded? Booch hit big, slow ass can go too. Billy, he don't know if he's coming or going. He don't even know how the motherfucking coach. The players get hot and he decided to take them out. I don't understand. Zach Levine ain't been doing shit for the last couple games. Why didn't you not bench him? I don't care if Zach Levine get an attitude. I don't give a fuck. You're not even doing your job. Who the fuck is you to get an attitude with me? Because I'm bitching you because you don't want to. You, you playing like like you stupid or something. I don't know. C-Dub, I don't know. I just don't know. I don't. I think we should keep Zach Levine. If we go do some trades, we should be looking at motherfucking DeMar 
Wooch and motherfucking Billy and retool. All this rebuilding shit, you just can't up and rebuild because you see a player fucking up or he's not doing his job. You got to figure out if something's going on in this locker room. It's either Billy, it's either Wooch, or it's DeMar. Somebody got to have to go for us to keep Zach Levine happy. You just cannot get rid of Zach Levine. This is this not how this shit goes. That's just, I, listen, man, listen. I just bought a whole motherfucking house. The block I stay on, I don't like people. I can't just go around shooting up every motherfucking body because I don't like them. No, this is a situation that this is something that you have to deal with. Either you move your ass around or you stay put. I don't know, but we go see CW, buddy. I don't know. I'm just... I, Shout out to Auntie Go, man. I'm definitely feeling a lot of the stuff that you saying. Like, I think that, like I said, man, I'm on, I'm on whatever is best for the Chicago Bulls. I think, but I also think that whatever is best for the Chicago Bulls, it comes down to Billy Donovan exiting the the, the building. That's what it comes down to. I think that's where it needs to start. Then, if you like, I understand if you bring in another coach and then it's still not working. Then you can go ahead and say, all right, the players ain't working for me. This is not the kind of system I want to run. Things like that, et cetera, et cetera. And you move guys up out of there. But as of right now, we don't know what the hell is going to happen. We already know that Billy Donovan got his secret extension. We don't even know how much money or how many years. We don't even need to know the money. Let us know how much longer. But as certain people say it, Cornelius, he said, <laughs> he don't care if you got to extend that contract out 20 years. Get rid of his ass. <laughs> so I'm with it on that, man. You got to gut. You got to fix this some way, somehow. And that's just what it really comes down to. But, hey, that's it for me today, man. Appreciate all you guys that called in and gave your thoughts on the Chicago Bulls. Much appreciated. And if you want to be a part of something like this, ladies and gentlemen, call in. 773-242-9219. This is another episode of Shy Boys Podcast. I'm Bobby. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one for a show. Come on, yeah. Gang.